Hello, this is the Economic Performance Section D lecture. Our prioritized standard is the Economic Center 28. And objectively, we're going to examine tools used to analyze income inequality. Now, many factors actually affect the incomes that are earned by people in the United States and other types of market economies. People's incomes depend largely on the value of goods or services, including their labor, that they are able to sell in the marketplace. Now, those who own large amounts of scarce resources or possess rare talents in great demand receive higher incomes. So surgeons, they possess skills that normal people don't have. That's why a surgeon gets paid so well. A uh, professional athlete, someone who's seven foot tall, who can just stand under a basket and slam dunk all day, every day. Not everyone can say that. So that's why they get paid so much money. So the more rare your talents, uh, the more scarce resources that you possess, generally speaking, the more money you make. And conversely, those with very few or limited skills generally make very low incomes. So if you ever worked in a fast food place and you ever wondered, man, why don't I get paid more to work in this fast food place? I'll let you know. It's because anyone in the world could probably walk in off the streets and figure out how to do a job at a fast food place in about a day. That's why you don't get paid very well because Virtually anyone could do it. Now, there is a direct correlation between the productivity of a worker, uh, incentives offered for workers, and their incomes. So, more productive workers generally are better paid than less productive ones. So, this kind of shows that as productivity increases, compensation also increases. Not perfectly, but it does still go on that upward trajectory. The more incentives that are offered by a job, the higher the total compensation. So if your job offers health care, uh, retirement benefits, other types of benefits, then therefore your job is going to provide you more money than jobs that don't. Also, labor unions, through the practice of collective bargaining, negotiate with business owners for better pay, working hours, and working conditions for all workers. Now, collective bargaining, which is what labor unions do, they bargain for everyone, is usually related to higher worker pay. It can result in increased employer cost, however, which could be some of the reason for why some businesses are moving factories to low-income countries. Because uh, if you have to pay even your worst worker in this country $7.25 an hour, then... If you go to another country, you could possibly pay a great worker a dollar an hour. So that's probably why some businesses are doing that. Sadly, some people's pay is actually negatively impacted by things like discrimination. So generally speaking, women minorities historically paid considerably less than white males. Since the late 1960s, Income inequality has been growing in the United States, with real earnings having fallen for many families over this time period. Now, this does not actually mean that incomes for all uh, have fallen, but it uh, there are certain groups that are taking the brunt of that. Now, those with higher incomes have actually experienced much of the income growth. So if you see like the top 5% from 1967 to 2012, their incomes have been growing very steadily. Top 20%, their incomes have been growing at a nice rate. Uh, but the second 20, third 20, fourth 20, bottom 20%, their incomes have not changed much. Those of lower incomes have experienced very little of the income growth. Now, technically, they have been almost stagnant for the lowest earners. As you can see, this lowest group is pretty much identical to where they were in the late 60s. Several factors have actually led to these declining workers' wages, with some including the decline of labor unions. So when union membership was high, uh, generally speaking, the share of income going to other groups was going down. So the top people were making less as union membership went up. But then as union membership started to fall uh, in the 60s, we started to see those top groups starting to make more and more money again. 
Also, technological innovations. So if you can have a factory that has lots of machinery that can do the jobs that used to take uh, hundreds, thousands of workers, you don't need as many workers. So you don't have to pay as many people to do those jobs anymore. So that can be another reason. Uh, and the last reason is globalization. The fact that much of what we do is very globalized now. Uh, people with low skills are going to stay at the low end of things because we can just get other people to make those products. Now, growing income inequality is not just an American problem, as much of the world has also experienced an increasing disparity of income. So if we see globally, uh, once we really start hitting globalization, that's when we really started seeing a lot of income inequality in other places. And it's not just the United States, it's other places too. Now, to measure income inequality throughout the world, economists use what are called Lorenz curves and Gini coefficients, which are sometimes just called Gini indexes. So a Lorenz curve is going to look something like this, and this plots the share of GDP, or income, that's held by each quintile of the population. So you have like uh, your lower 20%, uh, the second 20, middle 20, fourth 20, and the top 20%. This kind of illustrates how much uh, money those different groups have. Okay. With this tool, you actually compare the area between the Lorenz curve. So this curve at the bottom here is considered the Lorenz curve. And the line of equality. So just this 45 degree angle line is considered the line of equality. The larger the area between the Lorenz curve and the line of equality, the less equal its distribution of income. So if this line is very close, so if this line of inequality and then the line of the Lorenz curve are about here, this actually means this is uh, more equal than if it's here. All right. Top 20 is gonna make, you would expect 20%, bottom 20 is gonna make around 20%. Next bottom, fifth is going to make about 20%. Middle is going to make about 20 Each group in theory should make about 20 But what we actually see in practice is the top 20% as of 2011, they represent half of the money. Uh, the group that's next to the top, you'd expect them to be 20 They're actually higher than 20 uh, The middle makes far less than 20% of the money. Uh, the next group they make even less, and the bottom 20% of our population is only responsible for 3.4% of the money. So that is a huge disparity of money. A Gini coefficient expresses the area between the Lorenz curve and the line of equality as a percentage of the total possible area of inequality. And this is calculated using an equation, which is right here, the Gini coefficient equation, A divided by A plus B. So basically, how much your area of inequality is divided by how much it could have been. Now, Gini coefficient of zero actually represents a perfectly equal distribution of income. So it would mean that the line of equality and the Lorenz curve are identical if that took place. Uh, while a Gini coefficient of one actually represents a maximum level of inequality of income, which basically would mean that the top 20% uh, makes all the money and everyone else makes none of the money. So generally speaking, you're not going to have zero, you're not going to have one. But the lower the Gini coefficient, the more equal a distribution of income. So as you see in the United States, we had a lower Gini coefficient in about 1967, and it has been creeping itself higher and higher and higher. So we are more unequal now than we were in the 60s. Now the Gini coefficient is actually much more convenient than a Lorenz curve because you can just compare Gini coefficients against other countries or other time periods. So if we look at our level of inequality now, we are on par to the inequality we had just before the Great Depression started. And you can also look at different countries with the Gini coefficients to see how things have gone over time. So we are growing unequal 
Um, other parts of the country are becoming more equal. Uh, so, yeah, there you go. And this kind of illustrates some of that Gini coefficient information also, uh, just to see what places are the most unequal. Uh, so the darker red colors mean you're more unequal. These places are, generally speaking, more unequal than the U.S. Uh, the places that are on the bluer end are going to be the places where things are more equal. All right, this concludes the Economic Performance Section D lecture. Our prioritized standard again was Economic Standard 28. And objectively, now you can examine tools used to analyze income inequality.